Hey there, welcome to this week's episode of Blue Marine TV. Thanks for tuning in. And it's been a while since I had a Canadian show, and I was starting to have withdrawals a little bit. So I've got May Strafey here. She is the development officer uh, in charge of annual giving over at Wilfred Laurier University in uh, in Canada. What's up, Maeve? How's it going? I'm so excited to be here. Buddies for a little while. A um, couple of people recommended that you be on the show, and I just had to had to uh, have you on. So, what do you do over at the university? What's what's your life like as an annual giving officer? Yeah, I am a Laurier grad, which is awesome because uh, it's really nice to not have to kind of build that passion from uh, from nothing. I, yeah. I was a Laurier student. Um, loved my experience, and so it's really the best job for a fundraiser to be back at your alma mater and uh, and fundraising for a university that you know and love already. Um, so, in terms of the regular day, I mean, annual giving's boredom, followed by you know, punctuated by moments of sheer terror in terms of and uh, and so that's you know, I, I'm my position is in leadership giving. So it's also called mid-level giving at some schools um, or some organizations. And uh, basically that kind of looks at the area between annual giving and major giving, you know, creating that pipeline from one to the other and dealing with those gifts that aren't quite annual and aren't quite major, but definitely. So that attention comes in the form of mail, phone calls. Um, I definitely incorporate some of my efforts into our regular direct response activities. Um, but uh, on top of that, I do lots of face-to-face -face visits as well, which is a really fun part of my job to meet with people in person. So kind of in short, it, every day is different, but I, I love it for that reason. Fun and and I should say that you know one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is I, I knew you were in charge of just annual giving and a lot of the people that follow Bloomerang and that maybe watch this podcast they're small shops right so yeah. the one fund does everything they just do fundraising and maybe they aren't familiar with a lot of these terms like you know, annual giving and leadership giving and maybe even major gifts at at some level can you talk about what you consider to be annual giving can you just kind of just you know define that term once and for all so that we all <laughs> kind of know what we're talking about totally um if you've ever been to a really old school fundraising conference um there's some cliched terms that are thrown around when it comes to annual giving um including annual giving is the lifeblood of any fundraising organization um annual giving is the base of the pyramid with those now that i've got <laughs> out of the way um for me uh, fun i mean they sentiment is right. Um, it is, for me, kind of really consistent, constant fundraising. 24-7, um, 365 days a year, we're always kind of chugging along. Um, so I think the kind of consistent, constantness of annual giving is really the big part. Um, so exciting new building, but annual giving, you know, keeps the lights on to, you know, use somewhat of a metaphor, but in a lot of cases, it's true. Um, your, the relationships you're building aren't one-on-one -on -one and they're not deep in the same way that major gift fundraisers get to have, you know, where you sit across the table from somebody and say, what are your passions and, and how can we align those with our fundraising priorities? Instead, it's trying to um, create messaging for the masses and, and connect with people and, and scale that will, will impact people. Um, but uh, those are all kind of, you know, bigger ways. At the end of the day, it's reaching out to people for what are usually smaller donations, but all throughout the year. Um, so it really, that's why it's a base the pyramid. It creates that base um, that you can, that any organization can operate off of. I think that's really what annual giving kind of boils. Secret sauce away uh, of all you do. Um, what's your plan look like? Is it, is it one, is it one that you create, you know, in the beginning of the year and execute throughout the year? Do you change it a lot? Is it fluid? And kind of what does it look like in terms of, you know, year, year long activities? Great questions. Um, I would say that kind of the, the foundation of annual giving is built on direct response, um, which for us includes mend phones. So we've got a call center full of students who are calling alumni and fundraising for the school. So again, those kind of, you know, reaching out to people in, um, in some ways less personal ways, but reaching a lot of people. Um, with um, we definitely we start any um, fiscal year with a specific plan. Um, the the bones of it look similar, so there's always going to be direct mailings. Um, there's always going to be the call center operating, and there's going to be some e solicitations that happen. Um, that's that's the tough part of annual giving is that sometimes you get into a rut in terms of the messaging that you're sending out. Yeah. Um, I've spoken with 
John Lepp before, who I know has been on Bloomering TV. And uh, he taught, I mean, his, he's the master of direct response. And he talks about how a lot of annual fundraising appeals look the same from year to year, from organization to organization. So you kind of have this same formula that's being replicated. So it can be hard to kind of figure out how to make your friend. Um, so that's a big challenge of annual giving teams. So, you know, you kind of, you've got these three direct mailings that are going to happen. What are they going to look like? Are you going to take last year's and just kind of modify the language and throw in new projects? Or are you going to um, start with something brand new and, and try to connect with people in a totally different way? And, uh, and so that's always the tough part of the day. Um, we hear it a lot as fundraisers, regardless of what area of fundraising you're working in, um, you've got to tell great stories. And so if every year you come up with a new story to tell and a new way to um, build your case for your organization and excite people about what you're doing, and more importantly, excite them about what they have the impact or what they have the opportunity to impact, um, that's what you really need to do. So um, you do need to mix it up. Um, I would say we, you know, we start with a plan, but there's definitely flexibility as we move mm -hmm. along. Um, and so, so planning is so important, but you also need to be nimble and you need to be ready as you see kind of the success throughout the year, um, how you might need to modify. How do you know when you're in a rut? Like, how do you know when, you know, this event or this breakfast or gala or whatever we've been doing every year is maybe not working anymore? And if, if you do decide to change course, how do you convince maybe the board or your boss that you know that's the right course of action? Yeah, it's it's a good question. It can be tricky. I mean, I guess one of the things I'm not. I, I think all fundraisers have a bit of a kind of a love for numbers in them, mm -hmm. um, and uh, numbers don't lie. And and one of the things about annual giving is that because it's consistent, um, if you have a goal, you know, based on exceeding last year's goal or. Um, based on retaining a certain number of donors, acquiring a certain number of donors, and you've got that number that you're aiming for, because it you may, you have your kind of periods of more gifts coming in, like at the end of the um, calendar year, because people are motivated by um, taxes, um, or the end of your fiscal year, because you have a lot of activities happening to support your annual ca campaign. Um, there are definitely those heavy periods, but there's also a consistent you know um, receipt of gifts throughout the year. So you kind of figure out if you're not on pace on a pretty regular basis and, and uh, you, you can't really count on some massive gift because it's annual giving to kind of go over the edge. So you do have a pretty good sense of when things aren't working and, and if you're keeping your eye on the numbers regularly, which any annual giving team should be, um, you can kind of modify and if you're nimble enough, make those tweaks to kind of drive yourself ahead when things aren't looking the way they should. So whether that's a fundraising event or um, as you're coming to the end of your campaign, you're really increasing the number of uh, fundraising activities you're doing, there are those chances to do that. And I think, you know, it's not too difficult um, to convince people that you need to change it up when the numbers aren't looking good. They, I mean, your, your board will tell you, um, they'll, they'll expect you to, to increase your efforts. As for what that looks like, that can be the hard part. Um, because, you know, annual giving, since it does kind of get in this, you know, stuck with those, these direct mailings that look the same to do something really innovative, depending on the kind of shop you work at can to do something and it needs to be different. And, and typically you can kind of, you can sell that in somewhat of an easy way, though. I'm sure everybody has different experiences with that. Yeah. Before I let you go, I want to, uh, let you wax poetic. If you were to run into a, a small shop fundraiser, on the street or an event and, and they're a person who does everything they do events and sponsorships and major gifts and marketing and all that what advice would you give to that person who's maybe struggling on the annual side with you know their their direct mail or those consistent things that that have to be done throughout the year what advice would you give that person um i would i would say, um you've got to you've got to see you know who are your donors who are the people who are giving year after year um, when you acquire new donors, who are they and, and can, you, can you figure out why they might have been acquired and, and what you did to, to bring them on? I think we always, um, I watched uh, Rory Green's Bloomerang TV app, um, which is so key and, and we do the same in fundraising all the time. So what value are you offering your donors um, and what value need, do you need to, um, to get them on? So if your donors are primarily giving through direct mail, then why are you Investing so much in your e-solicitation program, right. I think direct mail is is still extremely strong. Yeah. Snail mail, um, we try to invest our efforts in other things, but I think we we need to just see who's 
responding, who cares about our organization, what is getting them. And, and that's a whole part of the kind of annual giving conversation. And uh, if you kind of get a sense of those numbers, and whether you've got Razor's Edge that kind of collects your information, just you, you can find some answers in there, and that's really what should be driving you. I'm just honored. You have an awesome blog, too. You've got uh, What Gives Philanthropy. Where can people find that? Yeah, so it's philanthropy.com. Simple as that. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's been around for, what are we at now? I think three and a half years or something like that, maybe even four. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been around a little bit, and it's really a broad look at philanthropy and fundraising. And I, I try to make it as practical um, as, you know, exciting and inspiring. And we're always looking for guest bloggers. So if there's anybody out there watching who uh, wants to contribute, please get in touch. My, um, my email's mave at philanthropy.com, and I love having fellow fundraisers write because that's who we really want to hear from. On Twitter, too. So do that. Maybe this is awesome. Thanks for hanging out for a little while. See you next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye now.